You know, but it's great to have you here. I love you so much. And it always, uh, 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 man, uh, man, when I was preaching in New Orleans, we was preaching in New Orleans church. Man, that, man that's almost, that's over 25 years ago. Yes. My Lord, it's just grateful. I'm grateful to be, to be still preaching and still standing, giving God glory and praise. But what's even more encouraging to see members of that time doing well spiritually and loving the Lord. Yes. It's very, very encouraging. I'm so, you just bring me so much joy to see you. Amen. Well, God bless you. I'm also so uh, ready to do part two uh, to our God, the God within us, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've had an incredible weekend last weekend. Want to finish up today? I want to again thank the dance for dancing one more week for me. I couldn't get all I wanted to say in one week, you know, and, and be thankful I'm getting it all in two weeks. You'll be dancing three weeks in a row, you know. But it is just great uh, to be together. It's great to love the God and give God a glory and praise. Uh, Sour told me not. Not only have I broken the po podium, see the spirit be doing that. I don't know that be going on. That be the spirit. But he said, my stomping has broken the thing that's supposed to stick to my side and help me speak. He said, he said that thing broke too. This so the thing's in my pocket down here. But you know, I, I told him, I don't be doing that. That be the spirit. I'm just preaching. I don't be having a plot or a plan to break nothing. You know, and uh, but I'm looking forward to continue to give God glory and praise. Amen. Amen. Listen to this now. Amen. Part two. Thank you, Anthony, who wasn't supposed to be here today, but the Spirit brought him back. Praise God for that. The Holy Spirit is God's power in action. It is his active force. It is God's Spirit sent out to accomplish his will. His good and perfect and pleasing will. Our God's Spirit is not fake. It is not a show. His spirit is not a performance. It is God. He is not here to entertain us. That's right. It is not for us to watch people foaming at the mouth, right. run around, and, and pretend they got something they do not have. God's spirit has a purpose, a plan. It was all about teaching his word to the whole world. That's right. That's right, brother. It is also to fill us up with power from on high. Yeah. God's spirit is not timid. It is not a coward. That's right. My God is not a coward. That's right. And when his spirit lives in us, we do not supposed to be cowards. That's right. His spirit dwells in his people. He lives in us through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. I pray that we'll learn more today about his spirit and that we'll learn one vital, important thing about his spirit. It is given to those who obey him. It is not for the disobedient. It is not for those to make money off of. It is not for us to pretend we're something that we're not. It's for the obedient children of God. Amen. Amen. That will live out his will and not our own. Amen. I'm excited about reading and getting in God's words about his spirit. Amen. Turn with me. To 1 John chapter 4, verse 13. The title of my message simply, The Spirit God Gives Us. The God in Us. The Holy Spirit. Say, preacher, that's a mouthful. But God is a fool. He's a lot. He's everything. I couldn't give my God one word title. Thank you, Darcel. Like every time I wipe my forehead with this towel, I think about you. My sister didn't give me a little small rag. She gave me a half towel. Says I'd be sweating so much. And I'm so grateful. It says, it made for Mark Harris and to God be the glory. And Darcel, you'll be proud that my wife reminded me the other day, honey, you wipe your forehead every week with that towel. Have you washed it lately? <laughs> Thank God for the woman she given me. Yeah. So I took it home and washed it and brought it back. 
So to God be the glory. First John chapter four, verse 13 simply says, this is how we know that we that we live in him and he is in us. He has given us his spirit. Say, this is how we know who we are. Yeah, right now. He has given us his spirit. God gave it to us so that we can live. Damn. Now, how do he give us the spirit and how do we receive it? It's a gift. He gave it to us. Turn me to Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Oh, I want to hear those pages. I know some of y'all got them little computers and the little phones and tablets. <laughs> yeah, I know some of y'all hit a button, you're already there, you little cheaters. <laughs> but you better make sure you remember how to get there. Oh, you live by that tablet, then you don't even know how to use it. I'm going to send you to class that Ross will teach you the books of the Bible. You don't forgot the books of the Bible. Because you ain't got to do it. You just go, oh, go to T. Oh, then all the T, oh, there you go. Or go to, go to G for Galatians, and boom, you're there. <laughs> and then you go, what's the books of the Bible? Oh, I've been doing this for the last two years. I don't no. But don't forget the books of the Bible, amen? amen. Sometimes technology can make us lazy spiritually. Right. Don't allow that to make you lazy. And ain't nothing wrong with technology unless you use it. It, it, it causes you to be lazy towards God, then there's a problem. Amen? amen? Now that was free. Let's get back to the scripture. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, so how do you get this gift that's supposed to live in us? And what happens when, when, you, when you repent and be baptized? He gives a gift And then listen to This was incredible He don't stop Just giving you a gift Then he says this to you This encourages us Then out there And you will receive The gift of the Holy Spirit The promise for who? You. And who? For all whom the Lord our God Will call Who is he talking about? Us And our children God says I got a gift For all of you And by the way It's for you and your children And for everybody it's the Holy Spirit. I saw Shadarian walk in with a baby this morning. And I said, oh, Lord, when did this happen? I had to go hug Shadarian. Shadarian, oh, that's a little one. It ain't mine. It's my brother. Oh, I was just checking. She said, but this has been a weekend of all weekends. <laughs> she hadn't done that in a while. You know, you get a little baby, you ain't done that in a while. Oh, my God. But listen, you don't have to have to worry about that the Spirit because it'll never leave you. You leave it. It never leaves you. You leave him. Because remember, we learned from Marty, the Spirit ain't a it. It's God. You can leave God, but he, he doesn't leave us. Amen. You know how we tell our kids, we tell when our kids, our grandkids, drop them off and you know, don't forget to come get them. You don't have to have to worry about saying that with the Spirit. You don't ever have to worry about saying anything like that. You can think, amen, honey, you just do right and God will bless you. God give us the Spirit so that it can live with us forever. Look at John chapter 3, verse 34. Let's go to John for a minute. John chapter 3. So we just learn how to get it and keep it. You got to do right. John chapter 3 verse 34. Teaches some other things. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. This is God gives the spirit. What? How does he give it to us? With no church. Do you understand what God said to you? We get the spirit with what? So there is no limit of the spirit God gives you. That God fill you up forever and ever and ever. There is no limit of what my God can do for us. You got to understand that. That will blow your mind. And then he, can, he goes on. He says he gives it to us without limit. And then he says, oh my goodness. The Father loves the Son 
and has, has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remain on them. But we're not a people that's going to reject God's Son. We're people who accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. And therefore God gives us his Spirit without limit. He pours it on us. You better be glad we had just moved this. I, I, was, I could have this thing filled with water and just let it pour and pour and pour and it overspills and keeps going. It doesn't stop. That's God's spirit. We hinder God's spirit. God says, I got so much to give you. You can't. It just keeps going. And don't ever stop. That's why you can see Carissa up here doing a praise dance and say I'm speaking to you and besides my ADD. Because God has given the spirit to help her push through. That's why you see Willie. Amen. Amen, Carissa. That's why you see Willie up here giving a communion last week. And, you know, and, and, and he's, man, Willie walking up and down. He said, man, I thought about skipping church today. But the spirit made me come. You better believe it made you came. And the spirit would have made me find you too. It's my man, Martin, you looked at me to my I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's the spirit. Amen. And he gave it to us with no limit. None. That's why we see, man, I cannot believe Kyle over here signing. He's got a plan for We must not hinder God's blessing that he's trying to give us. We must not hinder the spirit he's trying to give us with no limit. This is just the beginning. This is the beginning. Marty Wooten walked in last week and he came in the front door there and he said, now Mark, don't take this the wrong way. I didn't think I was coming to see a church. This is a church. I was coming to see some building. He said, this blows my mind what God has done. He said, I didn't know what I, 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 I knew you had me coming to something. He said, I, I was one of y'all gonna even have sound. But look what God has done. Look what he has done. He gave us the spirit with no limit. And had somebody that's visiting and saw Tim and others and they go, well, I thought it'd just be black people here. They really said that. A visitor. Say, look what God is doing. People can be so negative in their spirit and their mind. But we must not get caught up in that. Just let God use us. Let him pour all the spirit on us. Be used by God and watch what my God will do for you. Watch. Let's don't hinder God. Open wide our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. And so I will go open up that AC. <laughs> Make sure it's on that 72. Because I'm just getting started. No, let me tell you. It's on. It's on. Just double check for a brother. I'm, this rag, I might need to go get a full towel. Because I feel the spirit this morning. Look at chapter 14, verse 15. John chapter 14. Verse 15. Listen what it says here. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you an, an, another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. The world cannot recognize it. Don't understand it. Don't know it. But we know it. From God's words. And God says, it will, I will live in you. The world don't recognize God's love. Because they, not, they don't have love. And they don't listen to the Spirit, even though it, God is trying to even give it to them. Right. He uses the Spirit to try to open their mind to, and their hearts for Him. He'll use other people to open them up 
to call all men to him. But they refuse to listen. Let us not be a people that refuse to listen. Look at verse 23. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and I will come to them and make my, our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things. Yes. And I will, in, will remind you of everything I have said to you. Amen. Look at the purpose of the Holy Spirit. It's to teach you all things about God. Right. And then to remind you of God. That's right. When you're doing wrong, the Holy Spirit said, nope, don't do that. That's, right. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Right. When we're lusting and lying and cheating, the Holy to the Holy Spirit. Amen. When married, God expects us to stay holy in our marriage. Amen. Stay one to one another. Amen. Adultery is running rapid in our world. Amen. Lying and cheating on each other. But the Holy Spirit says no. Amen. Our teens that, that, that teach that the world is full of immorality and cheating and lying sleeping around. But the Holy Spirit says no. Amen. It teaches our kids to be disobedient to their parents. The world tries to teach them to be disrespectful. Your parents just don't understand. That was a crazy song back in the day. Will Smith made it up, wasn't it? What was the name of it? Parents just don't understand. See, that's the Holy Spirit told me the truth. That's the name of the, the, the rap. No, the world won't. The, the, what it is, the world don't want you to ever get the truth. Satan wants you to always be confused. To never accept the truth. To battle with your parents. To always be divisive. Always against each other. To battle uh, with those who try to teach you good. But the Holy Spirit is trying to teach you the truth. We got to be willing to listen. We gotta gain convictions. Yes, sir. We gotta be full of the Spirit. Let's be happy with God is teaching us. Allow the Spirit to teach you. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. See, I know Nasia and Simone are, are dating now. We all gonna be happy. Yes, sir. Fired up for them. It should be. Well, man, when will it be my turn? Maybe never with that attitude. Yeah. That's the wrong attitude. Yeah. Right. Ain't nobody left now. <laughs> Satan lies. It's a lie from Satan. Our world full of people searching for God. You open your mouth and let God use you. Don't fall for that garbage. Don't fall for it. Trust the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and he tells you to invite that person. Be open like Carissa's life. When the Holy Spirit told me to do it the other day, I was like, huh? I don't want to. But by being open, now she can overcome it. Yes. Don't live a lie. Right. Be open. Be real. Yeah. Trust God. Yes. It bothers me. People think they got to go somewhere to find somebody. Really? <laughs> do you forgot God? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a lot older than you, so look out when I go up there. Be ready to catch a brother. <laughs> he owns the whole world. We just got to open our mouth and allow God to use us. Don't listen to Satan. You got to go to Gainesville. I got to go to Miami. I gotta get, you ain't got to do nothing but open your mouth. You got the Holy Spirit. And God got people all around he's trying to save. 
Open your mouth like Britney did. <laughs> and let the church say, let the church say, amen. Open your mouth. And you should have somebody crazy about you. Working with his job, trying to fix everything so he can do what? What you trying to do? What you trying to date? You should have that too. It ain't just for them. It ain't just for Simone and, 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 and uh, Nasir. It's for all of us. We got the spirit with our limit. It's for all of us. And I be thinking about all y'all the time. I said, God, let me sleep because I'm out of my mind running. I'm plotting. Help me. Let the spirit lead me. Because I was glad to see. Uh, Ivy came in today. I said, Ooh. I thought about Ivy because I found somebody for Ivy. I said, God, you know, I, I said, Father, you know what will take me to a whole other level, Father? I said this last night. I said, God, you know what will take me to a whole If you would just, Father, when you, when you, when you, when you, when I see somebody, if you let me help, help me, use me to help me become a Christian and get married, Father. Boy, you would make me feel like I could just point people. Bam, 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 bam. They all become a Christian. And they all get married, Father. I say, remember, remember what happened in Boston? Remember what happened in Boston, Vanita? What happened in Boston, Vanita? <laughs> what happened? Oh, they found each other. Wait a minute. We were leading a group of 23 singles. And what they were saying to us all the time, Vanita? That's just my friend. Then my friend. I ain't got no brothers around. Ain't nobody. I want to get, get mad too. <laughs> I rebuked every one of them. Shut up. Repent and love God. Every one of you. You ungodly people. His name is God. You think he can't fix your little mini weeny need problem? Amen. Y'all can't even see through your little problem so small to God. When you repent, my God will open the floodgates. Open your mouth. And what happened when they repented, Benita? All of a sudden they start falling down like flies. Mark, uh, I repented. I know you're going on the mission team, but anyway, you get back and marry us. No, I can't come back and marry you, but who you finna marry now? <laughs> well, I did another comic. Uh, I need you to be a best man. Best man, man, I'm on a mission team. They just start burning, repenting, and God opened the floodgates. They just start speaking to everybody everywhere around to become Christians, and they all got married. Every last one of them. <laughs> the problem is, it's our faith. That's right. We hinder the power of God. It's time to repent, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Do y'all understand? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Church says? Yeah. You sure? Because do I need to call your name out so you repent? Because no. I don't have a problem doing it now. <laughs> Every one of you. Yeah. I can start with sisters, then the brother. Now, well, how do you want me to do this? Amen. Or do I can just move on? Yeah. You, go, you want me to say something? <laughs> I'm gonna be gentle with you. I ain't gonna hug you like I hugged TJ the other day. I'm, see, I'm gonna hug you like this. Come here! See, he thought I was going to TJ. You don't know how the spirit be moving, but it can hit you just like that. This guy come twice. This guy came around twice in the last six months. He told me last time he came, he said. Pastor, I know I see what I need to do. I need to find Jesus. Well, man, I'm right here. See, too many of us, we know, and then yet we let Satan constantly hinder us. So I'm going to have to go pay a visit on this job and just walk in. I ain't got to do but look. He'll be like, I'm coming. You're right. So I'm going to remind him what he told me. See, we got to remember all that God has said and done for us. He come and turn himself in. I'm just going to give God the glory. Amen. And I'm going to get out of here, Carl. I need you to come on back down here for a minute. <laughs> got a date I need to set you up with. Because that's how I know who God, God works. If we would just believe. Amen. Let's see if you're going to be honest with me. How many of you want to get married? Raise your hand. Look at this. Okay, so I'm, I need to go. Let me see here. You, you get married. Can you just put your hand down? <laughs> Yeah, I want to get married. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Hey, hey. Oh, Lord, Petron, look at Miles. The brother, she said, brother, want to get married. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Miles, and that's how you start young. So when you get like them, your faith is already there, brother. It's already there. It's already there. You ain't, you ain't gonna have some of their problems. 
Jesus. Amen, church. Release the spirit. Everywhere you go, just release it. Release the spirit. Everywhere you go, release it. And watch what he does. Lord have mercy. I know that's right. I begin to feel it. Rum rum is eight. Let me hear up before y'all be doing part three dance. Let me get through this thing. Romans 8. I'm about there. Halfway home. Romans 8 1. Listen to, listen to what God says about the Spirit. Boy, if we, if we get this, give me your name again. Emmett. Emmett, I'm going to be praying for you. What's your last name, Emmett? Gooch. Gooch, gotcha. You on my prayer list. Because you, 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 you don't know what I'm praying for, but get ready. You're going to be finding Jesus and everything else. <laughs> Darcy, what's your brother's name? Sam. Sam. I'll be praying for you. This is just beginning, you and your wife. I'm so excited about them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I asked him how many kids they wanted. Me and Sam was on the same page. We were thinking two. Then his wife spoke. Hey, I want four. I said, Sam, do you need me to get on my knees now? He talked about, Sam talked about help a brother. He talked about help a brother. But that's exciting because I want all of them to become Christians also. Those are God's kids. We want them to find God. Romans 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law is the spirit who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. God did, did by sending his own son in the likeness of sin for flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled, fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. Where's your mindset this morning? Where is it? Is it in the spirit or is it in the flesh? Flesh has doubt. Flesh don't believe. Full of fear. Everybody get mad but me. That's the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, I'm going to put a friend too. That's the flesh. Because oh, you fear and doubt God. Break it down, brother. Break it down. Do not live in the flesh. Oh, let me bother Abby one more time before I let her go. <laughs> I was talking to her the week, last week and I asked about, does she want to get married? Her boy said, yeah. She said this to me. I ain't never had nobody say this. I was like, okay, now I have a time out. She said, well, let me finish college first now. Let me, okay, before you, you finna pray, what? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I said, well, I have it. You don't, you can't control the spirit. <laughs> the spirit is going to do what the spirit want to do. We just got to keep in step with the spirit. Amen. That's where it's all about. I said, because you might fall in love and you'd be like, oh, I might do home. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's how the spirit works. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the, by the flesh is hostile towards God. That's scary. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. When your mind is governed by the flesh, you can't even submit to God. So you got to get rid of that. You got to decide, I'm going to submit to the Spirit. Yes. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. When you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. You're in trouble. And some of us live too much in the flesh. And we got to stop it. And get in God's spirit. God is not pleased with you living in the flesh. He is not, that, that man, he is not happy with that. With you giving in to your immorality. Or giving in to adultery. Giving in to impurities. Giving in to lust. Giving in to cheating, lying. Giving in, giving in, giving in. You giving in to the wrong things. 
Jesus. Give in to the Spirit. Deny yourself and take up the cross daily. And I just met Sam. But I can tell you this, Sam, from just meeting you, I can tell you this, and this is the gospel truth. You want to have a great marriage for the rest of your life? You better get to know God. Amen. And you got to give in to the spirit and not your flesh. Because if you don't do that, when your wife hurts your feelings, you're going to snap. Right. How many of you married? Raise your hand. Put your hand down if you never got mad at your spouse. <laughs> your, your hands better go back up every one of you, little lying rascals. <laughs> Put them down now. Yeah, we get our feelings hurt. That's the flesh. But with the spirit, we can correct that quickly. Without the spirit, it destroys marriages. Because you get your feelings hurt, then you deny each other, you have all kind of issues towards each other. That's true. I told my son in my first our first marriage council. I'm gonna see if Kanisha remember. What was the challenge I gave Michael about you? Out of Peter. I give you a chance. It was in Peter. Yes, it was first Peter. Huh? Okay, yeah, you, you, you're in the rabbit. What was I challenging him about? You remember what it was? It's, it's about how you treat your spouse and what will happen to your prayers. He, he, your prayers will be hindered. That your God says you don't treat that child I gave you, that woman that I've given to you, you disrespect her and don't treat her properly. God says your prayers will be hindered. He will not listen. I said, son, you want to get married? You better get this one right. Right. He tells you to leave. You're in charge, but then he drop a bomb on you. Boom! Right. You, you, you disrespect her. You mistreat her. God says, you're done. Mm -hmm. Now, I love the fact that I'm a man. I'm glad that the women have the babies. I don't think I can have it. <laughs> I'm glad it's that way. But when I, when I read through the responsibility of us men, my God, my God. I'm trying to wonder why men, why women be, they got to preach and got to do all this because they ain't no men. Hey, listen, let, let the men, let, we got a lot on our plate. Trust God. Let them raise up. Don't tear them down. Let them raise up. That's a whole nother sermon. Let me keep focusing on the Holy Spirit. That's a whole nother sermon. I can't wait to do that one. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Let me say, baby. That's a three-weeker. <laughs> that's my baby. <laughs> Look at verse 9. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to God. You do not belong to him. That's right. If you don't have the spirit. That's right. So you got man, you God, God says you're not mine. We must have the spirit. It's not an option. It's not an opinion. Right. That's right. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is life, living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit who lives in you. My God. Yes. His spirit will help us not live in all that sin. Yes. That's right. His spirit help us not be selfish. Prideful. See, some of us got those sins that you can't see. That's right, Mark. Talk about it. And them sins you can't see will send you to hell just as fast as those sins you can see. See, we're quick to repent of what you can see on. That was my challenge raising Brittany and Michael. Michael's sin was like, Pow! it's all out there. You can see it. Can I can help him repent. Brittany said I had to play B4, miss. A3, close. C5, ding, 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 ding. I got it. You have to find it. You got to help him identify and get rid of it. Maybe I don't have children like that. Your children are so perfect. They tell you everything. Michael. 
was saying was, man, brother, I could walk in a house like this. It's all over. It's all over the wall. It says everywhere. I know what to clean up and what to sweep up. Brittany, that was baby G. Oh, that was baby girl. She come in. Hi, daddy. You little sinful rascal. What's going on? And she was ripped, bro. She was hot daddy big time. She's a sin. Batting the little eyes. I had to learn, Chris. So you got that little baby girl. I had to learn. When you love them, you got to find it, man, because they, they ain't going to tell you everything. You got them little girls. They ain't going to tell you everything. They are not. And then Vanita was, oh, man, Vanita was like a ninja. But, boy, she was ninja. Vanita go in the room and be out of the room. And you never knew Vanita was in the room. She was like the CIA. And she'll go in there, come out, say, uh, you need to talk to your girl. Right Look what I found. Oh, you found that? Why you found that? <laughs> um, yeah, the Holy Spirit, I'm, and I, I'm mom. To my mom, you go, you don't, you don't look right. Exactly. You, you, you looking at baby girl the whole time. Stop looking at baby girl. Uh -huh. Baby girl ain't seen. <laughs> Help. Yeah. We got to be able to do that in our family. And boy, and then once, but then what was cool about it, once we taught Britain not to be that way, she started changing. Oh my goodness. Man, I'm giving God the glory and praise and honor. I just get on my knees and sometimes we want to cry. Brittany, get up now, come give me a hug and talk. Oh, this is my child. Oh, sucky, sucky. You know, just hugging with, hey, good morning, Dad. Come home, Dad. You all right? I'm all right, sweetie. How you doing? Where's Shirley? Oh, she gone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then I was like, can you make sure she don't never come back? <laughs> can you keep her far away? Some people, what's certain? That's that spirit. mean. Yeah. Brittany had a mean spirit. You heard Brittany feeling you're in trouble. She took forever to forgive you. Yeah. Mike can forgive you within seconds. Oh, dad, everything okay. Man, I had to tighten that bottom up. I know that junk hurt a little bit, dad, but it's all right. Everything cool. Wanna go shoot some ball? Yeah, dad, let's go shoot some ball. You wanna, you wanna go move? Yeah, dad, let's go get, can I get some popcorn and candy? He all moved on. I tight Brittany up. You wanna go, hey, baby, wanna go catch a movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to laugh, but this, she don't be laughing. <laughs> Okay, you, you want to go get something to eat? Sure. Food. You want to go get something to eat, baby? I ain't hungry. You ain't ate since I spanked you about eight hours ago. I ain't hungry. Okay. Come back the next day. Bring one. Oh, after school, bring. Let's. Oh, I, I know. Let's go to your favorite restaurant. I ain't hungry. <laughs> Man, you must have had a big lunch today. No. Child, you ain't ate in a day and a half. I ain't hungry. I said, okay, I'm a starver then. I ain't gonna ask you again. They go by. Okay, I gotta ask this child again. Baby, wanna go get some eat? I ain't hungry. <laughs> okay, you know how I start feeding her? Get this one right. Guess what I start feeding? The word of God. Amen. Well, let's eat some word here. Let's open up the word. Talk about some forgiveness. Right. Moving on. Now, once she ate the word and was able to forgive, oh, she wanna eat you out of the house and home. Right. Well, she hungry now. Uh, what that, what that restaurant you want to take me at? I ain't got no money now. <laughs> I'll be broke. <laughs> Paid a few bills so the lights can stay on. <laughs> you know, so are you with me? You got to really be in touch with your kids through the spirit. Know what's going on. Look at verse 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. But it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Yes. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God 
are the children of God. You know who belong to God? Who allows the Spirit to lead them. Who allows the Spirit to lead them. Is the Spirit leading you? Has the Spirit been leading you this morning? My praise dancer, has the Spirit lead you? Or that was just a song? Or is it a spirit? Or is it just a song? Dancing, got all the moves. But the spirit leading you. Do you believe the words that were coming out of that song? Is it making an impact on your life? Can people see the spirit in you? Is it clear? When nobody else around but you in the world, are you the only light in that room? Come on. Remember what Miss Creech was saying in Sunday school? Or who was that saying about how everybody would be cursing all around with that Miss Louisa? But she wouldn't. That was that one light, that beacon light. Is that who you are? You're on campus and everybody around there, somebody got a boyfriend and sleeping with somebody but you. Or do you say the same thing they say because you embarrassed? You give in to peer pressure? Somebody want that little kiss, you do it because you don't want to be like the only one not doing it? What goes on? You curse because they curse? You give in to the peer pressure? You better not let, it's mighty quiet. You better not let that peer pressure destroy you. Focus on what's right. How many of you are 15? Raise your hand if you're 15. 15 and, and, uh, and below. 15 and below. Raise your hand high. Okay. Let me tell you what happened to me. I was 15 years old. I snuck in a drive-in fitter with 18, 19, 20-year-olds. The drive-in fitter was Ready X. We get in the drive-in fitter. Let me tell you how arrogant we were. We sneak in the drive-in fitter. You would think we was trying to stay hidden, you know, without nobody seeing us, but not us. We're going to get some popcorn, and we're going to sit right in the front of the, the, the uh, they had a bench in front of the, the movie screen. We're sitting there eating our popcorn like we paid to get in, and we old enough. Arrogant. Nobody said a word to us until we, I looked up my corner of my eye and saw the popo coming in. <laughs> and that joke was riding slow. So I'm like, I'm going to keep my eye on this. They ain't eating their popcorn. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm through eating. <laughs> that rock's was coming this way. I looked at the guy and said, y'all see the popo over here? Man, you, man, leave me alone. No, I'm going to tell you. That joke is going to make a turn. Come get us. He turned. Y'all stayed. I ran. <laughs> I jumped the fence, I looked behind me, they were all jumping the fence. They had a plan. On the other side of the fence, another popo waiting on us. They ain't no teenagers. The guy was just sitting there. I jumped, that's right, you As soon as I jumped, I ran right into him. Boom! Where you come from? Where you been? You just came from the other side of that fence. Just wait right here, your other one's jumping now, they don't see us, just, just wait right there. You, come on over here. I, boy, don't you, boy, don't you run. I, 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 you better not run. Get on over there. And I'm going to, when he turned his back to me, I'm gonna, I thought, oh, should I run? He ain't looking at me. And then he told the other one, boy, don't you run. I ain't finna go nowhere. That, he, he for real. <laughs> I'm going to sit right here. He lined us all up and said, now look, I can take you to jail. You ain't old enough. This, this is not worth it. It's time to change. Don't do this again. I'm saying, oh my God, he's going to give us a second chance. I'm happy. I'm like, oh, geez, I ain't never sneaking this driving again. I got other plans. So I ain't no Christian, but I ain't going to drive it again. <laughs> I'm done. I'm thinking, he's giving us another chance. Yes. And he, he gave us a strong correction, and that's it. If I catch I'm here all the time. Let them call me again on you. You're going to jail. And you're going to get a record. That's breaking an entry. And you ain't got to tell me twice. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. That police officer walked away. Tell you, peer pressure, you better learn this one. Mm. He walked away and got about 30 yards from us. The 20 year old did this. What y'all acting like y'all scared of? Right. I was just being ready to shoot that bone. He pulled out a gun. My heart dropped. You gonna shoot him because we broke in a drive in? We all going to prison. I looked at my other friend, he was 15 with me. I said, come with me now. We're done. We ain't hanging around these knuckleheads no more. We got to change our lives. We got to do something different. This is not working. 
And we walked away. I never hung out with them again. About five years later, one who pulled out a gun was dead. Still doing the same thing and pulled out a gun. We better leave the flesh alone. You better find the spirit. The flesh leads to a dead end. Dead end forever. We got to get serious about our walk with God. It took me a minute to get my act together, but I got my act together. It took Vanita, Martin Wooten running after me for a little while, but it took Vanita one day seeing me. She never hardly said anything to me besides, how, how, how you doing? I don't know what's wrong with her. She just, she just spoke very kindly to me. I said, just, hi, how you doing? Ain't give me the time of day. And one day she said, hey, what you doing? <laughs> Nothing. I'm thinking we finna go somewhere. Won't you come to Bible talk with me? Bible talk? Oh, that's gonna want me to open the Bible. I know what this is about. But because you asked, let me. <laughs> we go to Bible talk. And then I heard the word. I was scared from that point on to read the Bible. Because I did not want to change my life. I was too deep in sin. But the Spirit did not let me go. When I went down to Miami, I told you story about I got in, 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 stole my sister's car. The Spirit was working on me then. The Spirit was constantly working on me, telling me to listen to the truth. The Spirit is always working on us. The question is, are we listening to the Spirit? Are we listening? It's constantly trying to teach us the truth. My son listened to the Spirit and became a Christian. And then he listened to the Spirit about Kanisha. They gave, I was impressed. They kind of went their separate ways. I think they dated for a while. They gave each other some space and said, you know what? Maybe it's not God's will. Then Kanisha pulled a slick one. I was impressed, Kanisha. But it's what I do. Jada and JC got married. And she probably wouldn't pull it down. I'm just bothering her. But she showed up at that wedding. <laughs> and, my, and then she said, we sat down with him. My son, look. He said, Daddy, I think the spirit talking to me. <laughs> I said, what are you telling you, son? You better get back with condition, boy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> he said, Dad, she, I'm impressed with her. She loves God. Even when she was in China, I think you went overseas. When was it China? Yeah, it was China. Okay, I got that one right. She was over in China when she was in Atlanta in Gainesville. Mike said, no matter where this woman's been, she went to church and stayed with God. Yeah. See these other sisters around right here? All they want to get hooked up with me, but then most of them don't even read their Bibles. Yeah. I said, well, then yeah, that one you need to scratch off. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it seemed like they just want to look, they're just looking for a man. Come on. But Kanisha has God. Amen. With or without me, that woman goes to church. Right. That woman gonna help me go to heaven. Right. I say, boy, you got it. <laughs> you have figured it out. That woman reminded my mama. Amen. She gonna do what's right. Amen. With or without me. Amen. That's who I need to be with. Amen. What you waiting on, boy? Better go figure out, go, go get on your knees, find G, tell God, give her back to you. Yes. I said, Dad, I, I got a plan. It must have worked, but they back together. <laughs> but that's what we need to be. We need somebody going to help us make it to heaven. Yes. And that's what Michael said he saw in Kanisha. She's going to help me make it to heaven. Yes. She loves God more than she loves me. That's what we need to be finding. That's what God need to ask us to give us. Yes. When I found out that Nas had an interest in Simone, I told Simone, I put Simone, I said, man, look, look, look you, you, you in. <laughs> you, you in, because see, Nas love God. Right. Nas has showed me, he imitated Michael and JC. The spirit and how they love God. That young man let the spirit lead him. Why you think he up here didn't sing? Oh, you think that's because that's what he liked to do? He want to show you how good he is? That's the farthest thing from Nas' mind. Nas stay up here thinking, I hope y'all don't see me, but let's lead the song. Come on here. Oh, oh, 
you don't see me up here with move my hand. But he let God lead him. That's what you call the spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said, Amen. Amen. That's the spirit. And look at Simone. Simone told me yesterday, man, I, I, I was a little nervous about telling you I'm dead. I'm, Why are you nervous about telling you? Because you like my mama and my daddy. <laughs> I'm a little nervous talking to you. You're you, you, you a parent. I said, that's all right. You're right. So let's talk. <laughs> Y'all dating, that's good. Have some fun. Keep it right and pure and holy. You found each other. So have fun. Let God use you. And I gave him this charge. And I gave it to Michael, too. And Michael and Tanisha just blows me away how they do it. They, I'm so inspired by them. I say, let, it, let your relationship be based on God and not each other. Right. Everywhere you go, evangelize. Talk to people about Jesus. Help people find Jesus. Go on campus together. Let people know that you're God. When they find out, oh, y'all dating and y'all staying pure, it's going to blow their mind. Right. Michael, boys, can I believe him and Tanisha don't sleep together? That's right. Well, Michael, y'all ain't my boys. Y'all the, the guys of the world. But hey, my boys are Christians. And they get it. Yeah. They get it. I said, let God use y'all. Open your mouths. Let the Spirit use you. And it'll shut everybody up. Let him use you. Michael roommates a Christian. Kanisha, and she is engaged with taking people to church. She got a friend here up here. She's trying to bring the church. They're so out of focus. That's people of God. It's not about them. Now I'm getting married. I ain't got time for nobody else. Y'all don't understand, this, this is some tough stuff. That's not how they think it. I said, no, nah, don't y'all be that way either. Amen. Let it about be about God. That's right. I told, I told uh, the TJ the same thing. I said, man, I see you at, at, at work inviting people to church. That's awesome. Somebody came to me the other day, TJ, and like, yeah, I know, TJ, they go to your church. And I'm coming. I said, well, come. And I kept it moving. Because the spirit don't beg people. Right. You invite, they got to figure it out. Yeah. Everybody got to learn to submit to the spirit on their own. Right. On their own. Yeah. We can inspire, we can encourage, but they got to submit willingly. Amen. If you got to twist their arm, they will not last. Right. They got to want to do it. Right. I had a great talk with Petron, her husband. What's your husband's name, Petron? Right. Wayne. I said, Wayne, do I teach the truth here? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to say, how you know? <laughs> I said, so you think I teach the truth? Yes. Okay. You think I'm lying about anything? No. Nope. Okay. Oh, I love my kids going to church with y'all here. Oh, cool. So why haven't you joined us? Come on. I just got my own. Everybody got to come on their own terms. I said, Wayne, you have just said a mouthful. You are right. Know this. Me and the Spirit waiting. Figure it out. We just had a great time. I said, then Vanita walked by and, and Petra, I said, y'all come listen to our conversation. We got to love people enough to tell them the truth. Yes. So you, if you, you believe I'm teaching the truth, then come on. Yeah. I said, but Wayne, I am open. If I'm lying, show me. Help me get to heaven. Show me. I said, well, I, I'm going to listen to it. You open the Bible and show me something. I'm going to do what the Bible says, Wayne. I'm going to do whatever this says. Uh, no, you, 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 you going by the truth. Okay, that's all I need to know. <laughs> Amen. So I want y'all to know we got to be willing to always hold to the truth. Let the Spirit lead you and speak the truth and love to each other. Amen. Trust the Spirit. Amen. Don't trust yourself over the Spirit. Amen. I want to close with these few scriptures. Y'all got to remember that. Don't trust yourself over the Spirit. Amen. Let me close with these scriptures. Y'all got me fired up in here. Look at Acts chapter 5. Verse 25. Oh, I just got a few more I want to give you. Right. Acts 5, verse 25. Simply says, Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts, teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. The apostles were brought in and made up to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned. 
by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. He said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. That's it. Y'all got to remember that. That's right. yeah. Obey God over you and anybody else. That's right. Always do what's right, That's right, and my God will bless you. That's right. That's right. That's right. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. Remember, they just told him, you trying to make us guilty of this man, and then he just preached it to him. The God, the man you put on a tree, you killed. That's right. They didn't back down. Yeah. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgiveness of their sins. We are witness of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God gives, has given to those who obey him. Who did God give the Holy Spirit to? To those who obey him. Y'all better remember that. These people are like, I got all kinds of spirits and I can speak out all kinds of tongues. Well, it's a language to teach the truth. And he just don't give it to everybody who disobeys. People who go around and don't even obey God, somebody got the spirit. That is false. Yes, it is. It is not scriptural. We got to be a people that hang on to the truth and know that God will always be with us. Look at Galatians 5.24. All right. Galatians 5, 24. Hang on, I'm bringing it to you. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passion and his desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Say, those who belong to Christ Jesus has done what? Crucified, Crucified their flesh and his desires. You got to say, you got to get rid of the stuff that calls, hinders the spirit to live in you. Yes. You got to crucify it. That's, right. That's what those who belong to Christ Jesus, they do that. They crucify it and get rid of the stuff that hinders them. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Oh, I love this. Amen. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. Do you have this freedom from your sins and life? Amen. Amen. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into the image of with every increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is what? The Spirit. the Spirit. God is the Spirit that lives in us. We must keep in step with the Spirit. Align ourselves with God and not with the evil desires of this world. Amen. And we must understand that God is not a show. He's God. And we got to be willing to humble ourselves, get rid of the flesh, and let the Spirit indwell and live in us. And if you allow the Spirit to live in you, my God, watch what my God can do for you. God is for us. Who can be against us? Who? Who? My God is for you, sister. Who can be against you? FCJ better get ready. There's a spirit coming. And he's living in you. Amen. You and F better get ready. There's a spirit coming. And he's living in you. DC better get ready. There's a spirit coming. And he's living in you. Amen. High school got to be ready come August 20th. I know you're done, but they better get ready come August 20th because there's a spirit coming and he lives in you. Your jaws better get ready. Monday, tomorrow, they better get ready because there's a spirit coming and he lives in you. My God lives in us. And if he's with us, who can be against us? Who? They better get ready in that hospital. Because when they see you, they're going to know there's a spirit in you. And he lives in you. 
country. Who can be against us? I'm going to ask us to get on our knees as we close with prayer. And then I'm going to ask Nod to come and lead us and thank you, Lord, so we have a spirit of gratitude for God living in us. Anthony, can you come and close out with prayer, please?